Ever wondered what it will look like if an automobile company throws common sense out of the window? Well, don't wonder, we've got a special one for you today. General Motors, in the 1980s, went on a spectacular run of blunders trying to keep up with the market. So how about a crash course on the absolute worst cars that General Motors produced in the 1980s? Kicking off the list, we have the 1980 Corvette 305 California. Before the Corvette nameplate became one of the best American muscle car brands, the Corvette reputation took a significant nosedive with the 1980 Corvette 305 California edition. This abomination replaced the Corvette's iconic V8 with a wheezing 305 cubic inch engine that barely produced 180 horsepower, and to add insult to injury, General Motors decided to slap the California label on it as if the state was somehow responsible for the car's oddly poor performance as a sports car. No doubt, the 1970s emissions regulation did a number on GM's production plans, but there was a lot the company could have done better to give the California Corvette a better chance at succeeding. Aside from the weak V8 engine, the car also featured a three-speed automatic transmission setup that could barely keep up. Up next, the Chevy El Camino, fifth generation 1978-1987. On paper, the Chevy El Camino was a brilliant vehicle, Combining the adaptability of a truck with the comfort of a passenger car, all wrapped up in a sports car package, the Chevy El Camino was on the right track. Unfortunately, the hybrid vehicle never found its target audience. Sure, the car had the power of a sports car, but the aerodynamics of adding cargo capacity to the El Camino reduced its functionality. The Chevy El Camino was neither a sports car nor an ideal vehicle for everyday commutes due to its limited passenger space. Instead, it was designed for farmers and ranchers, which was a questionable decision since there were better alternatives in the pickup market. Even worse, the 1980s model of the Chevy El Camino was the fifth generation of the nameplate, and it was sleeker and smaller than its predecessor. This generation also featured V6 engines, with an option to fit the vehicle with an Oldsmobile diesel engine. Hey, for more videos like this, do subscribe and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on our next upload. Also, drop a like to support the channel so we can keep making these videos for you. In the fifth spot, we have the 1982 Chevrolet Camaro Iron Duke. The Chevrolet Camaro Iron Duke was the first model of the third-generation Camaro nameplate. Following the success of the second-generation Camaros, lifelong Camaro fans were expecting significant improvements in performance and power, but GM didn't get the memo. The Iron Duke Camaro received no balance shafts, ham phasing, or sophisticated add-ons. But that wasn't what made Chevy fans hate the Camaro Iron Duke so much. Powering the car was a 2.5-liter inline four-cylinder engine by Pontiac. On paper, the engine was good. Going from 0 to 60 miles per hour took about 20 seconds, and the engine was tough and durable. But it also had several flaws. The Iron Duke engine featured several design errors which led to several problems like sluggish acceleration and jerky handling. As if that wasn't enough, GM sold many of its Camaro fans a fake dream after falsely advertising the performance of the car. So, while over 64,000 units of the 1982 Camaro Iron Duke were sold, it wasn't because the car was a great one. Moving on to number 4, the Cadillac CMAR1. Surprised the Cadillac made the list? Don't be. GM really went wild with this one. The Cadillac brand is arguably one of the best American luxury offerings on the market, except in the 1980s when it was just pure thrash. The Cadillac C Maron was essentially a rebadged Chevrolet Cavalier and was a shameless attempt by General Motors to cash in on the luxury car craze at the time. One of the biggest problems of the C Maron was that it was never supposed to be a Cadillac. The last minute decision to make it one meant the C Maron had a cheap plasticky interior and lackluster performance, despite GM's best attempts. Customers who bought the Camarins had to endure the slow engines contrary to the dominant performance of the Cadillac nameplate. The most astonishing part of the story is that GM went on to produce the Cadillac C Maron with their overstuffed leather seats and cheap engine from 1982 to 1988. Holding down the third spot, we have the 1980 General Motors X Card. How bad can a car be? Well, the United States Department of Justice served this one a lawsuit. The thing is, a lot of things went wrong with the 1980 GM X cars. It's hard to pinpoint how or why it happened. For starters, GM wanted to create a car with a unibody platform that featured a small displacement engine, 
and offered improved fuel economy and cabin space without serious increases in production costs. Ultimately, the platform led to the production of the Chevrolet Citation, the Oldsmobile Omega, the Buick Skylark, and the Pontiac Phoenix, all of which were referred to as the 1980X cars. Unfortunately, all the cars suffered failing transmissions, unstable structures due to bad welding and terribly unreliable engines. Most of these issues ideally should have been fixed by quality control tests, but GM seemed to have forgotten how to conduct one. Aside from the quality issues, the X cars were quite boring to drive since going too fast made the sluggish handling of the car very noticeable. And most importantly, the braking system of the 1980 GM X cars was virtually non-existent. Customers who bought the X cars reported several cases of the vehicle's rear brakes prematurely locking which contributed to several fatal crashes. Eventually, the government had to sue GM, which crushed the X cars under a massive bad PR campaign. The X cars were a prime example of GM's declining quality and lack of innovation in the ADS. GM went on to produce models on the X platform for three to four years before discontinuing the line. In the second spot, we have the 1988 Pontiac Lehman. Remember the awful X cars we just talked about? Well, General Motors failed to learn any lessons with how spectacularly the line failed to be a success. Instead, the company decided to resurrect the Lehman's nameplate by rebranding the Daewoo Lemons cars imported from South Korea. The result? A car so hilariously awful it was sad to see. The 1988 Lehmans were underpowered, poorly built, and generally looked like generic rental cars, except they weren't. Under the hood, the car featured a 74-horsepower engine designed in Germany before they were shipped to South Korea for assembly. There's no precise reason for the partnership between General Motors and Daewoo, and the collaboration yielded no benefits that most Pontiac enthusiasts try to pretend this car never existed. Aside from the terrible engine, the car featured a four-speed manual transmission setup, although customers had the option to get a three-speed automatic setup. GM went on to produce the rebranded Daewoo Lehman's line until 1993, despite the poor sales year after year. Lastly, the 1985 Cadillac Fleetwood. Of course, we have to talk about the Cadillac Fleetwood. Sure, it was an exclusively a 1980s car. The Cadillac Fleetwood was a full-size luxury sedan nameplate built on GM's front-wheel drive C-body platform. One of the problems with the Cadillac Fleetwood was that GM was trying to downsize to save production costs and improve fuel economy. But downsizing, when it comes to a luxury brand, was always going to be a disaster. Instead of focusing on what gave the Cadillacs their reputation, like sheer size and excessive decor, GM focused on producing a smaller, functionally efficient car that would increase its market share in the luxury market. The vehicle exterior became visually less imposing, and the interior wasn't left out. The car interior featured fake wood, some chrome beading on the dash, panels of simulated leather, and extensive labeling. For die-hard Cadillac fans, these adjustments were easy to understand, but the vehicle couldn't quite convert new potential fans. Under the hood, the featured a 4.1 fuel-injected V8 with quick throttle response and low-speed acceleration. On paper, this alone would have made the Fleetwood a good vehicle, but driving the car was anything but satisfying. The car handling was terrible for a small car, which is absurd. It's almost as if the Cadillac's engineering department were so used to a large car, they forgot to tune the handling of a small car. So which of these cars surprised you, or which one did you think we missed? Also, let us know in the comment section if you enjoy videos like this so we can keep giving you the best. Don't forget to subscribe and drop a like if you enjoyed the video and go check out some of our other fascinating stories on the channel.